Yo, what's going on guys? I'm Sam. Welcome back to one of my last iOS 13 update videos. I've been covering this update now for about a year and a half, and now we're less than a week away from it actually coming out, being available in beta one format. So now that we've heard all the main rumors, I wanna share with you in a comprehensive video everything we can expect to see, instead of just like these bits and pieces of articles that I've been covering. I also wanna tell you guys how you can get it. I'll cover that at the end and when exactly it is dropping on June 3rd, 2019. But let's go ahead and jump in. If you're excited for that, drop a like down below. Always helps me out and hits subscribe so you stay up to date on all the iOS 13 hoopla. First up, a big part of iOS 13 is actually what devices it's rumored to support. I've made a couple videos on this just because it's a little bit shocking, but unfortunately, if you have an iPhone 5S, an iPhone 6, an iPhone 6 Plus, or even the uh, great four inch iPhone SE, iOS 13 as of right now is said to not support those devices. Also for iPad users, if you have an original iPad Air or an iPad mini 2, unfortunately Apple's cutting the cord there as well. So no iOS 13 for you as well. But for those of you with newer devices that can actually get the update, the update, it's gonna be nuts. Like I've never seen this many features genuinely since I've been on YouTube for about six and a half years. So let's jump into that. The first feature you can expect to see on all devices for iOS 13, we'll jump into iPad exclusive ones a little bit later on, is a redesigned home screen. Now the emphasis is said to be on the iPad, but it's gonna look a little bit different on the iPhone as well. This is actually one of those things that we don't have a clear picture of just yet. You would have thought that that big update, that big change would have leaked by now, but it hasn't. It's just gonna look a little bit different or a lot of bit different if you have an iPad. Now following the home screen to continue that breath of fresh air for iOS, while the icons, we haven't heard anything about those changing, so they're probably going to stay the same. There are gonna be a lot of UI tweaks across the board to make it feel fresh again and fun and engaging. So closing apps is gonna look a little bit different. Going into multitasking, that is going to be refreshed and have a new look as well. And even the widgets on the home screen are going to look cleaner. They're not going to look like they're sort of ported from iOS 7, places on iOS 12, it's gonna look great. Following that is dark mode, a feature that I don't know about you guys, have you ever heard of that one before? Have you maybe been waiting for your entire life? I mean, I remember hearing rumors about this probably since I've been on YouTube for like six and a half years, and this is the year with iOS 13 that it is finally happening. And Mark Gurman actually says it will look very similar to this. Uh, this is an amazing iOS 13 concept by Alvaro Pubicio. I'll leave it linked down below. Next up for wallpapers, dynamic wallpapers. You know, the ones that have literally not changed on the phone since iOS 7. I don't know why I'm turning country here, but those are getting refreshed. So no more of the same boring dynamic wallpapers. Hopefully they'll be a little bit more engaging and possibly more creative than just bubbles floating around your screen. Next up, Apple's also working on native like swipe key support for the keyboard that looks just like this, although it is unclear whether or not that's going to make the final iOS 13 beta one release, or if it's just gonna be kept for Apple internal testing. But Apple is working on this, and personally, it is something that I would enjoy. Yes, it's been an Android feature forever, but it doesn't hurt for Apple to borrow from time to time. It's, it's not like Android has ever borrowed anything from the iPhone. Following that, iOS 13 is going to be gaining something a little bit different. So you guys all know, do not disturb. It'll mute notifications at a certain time during the night, so you don't wanna be disturbed. That is going to be seeing deeper integration with the bedtime feature in the clock app into something that Apple is calling nighttime mode or night mode, where everything will be muted and there will actually be some form of sleep pattern tracking uh, I guess to see how you slept during the night. They actually acquired a company that does this a while back and it makes sense. They bought the company a few years ago. They've been working to integrate it in iOS and iOS 13 is gonna be the year that we see sleep tracking integrated into this bedtime night mode thing that also isn't gonna wake you up because everything will be muted. Now, if you do a lot of typography work, iOS 13 is going to radically improve font management rather than you having to install system profiles, which I've always found a little bit sketchy on a personal note, uh, you are gonna be able to do it through a new official Apple font management tool likely located in settings. So it's gonna be really easy now to import fonts that you wanna use. You're not gonna to have to go through 18 different steps. You'll just be able to find a font and download it straight to your iPhone or iPad as you can do on a PC or Mac. The volume interface is getting radically upgraded as well in iOS 13, hopefully going in like one of the ears on the iPhone or just anywhere but the center of the screen because this has been not prime. This has been not great since whoever thought it was a good idea for it to cover the middle of the screen. I am also way too excited for a small change like that, but if you're an iPhone user, you know how annoying it is. You're in the middle of texting somebody, you just wanna turn on the volume and then you have to see this and you can't read any of your messages or like a quarter of the content on screen that is getting fixed as well, which is huge that Apple is finally recognizing. You might see a pattern here. 
Things that have never been on iOS before are finally coming. Font management, a dark mode, a better volume indicator. It's like after years of us badgering them to fix things, they're actually like, hey, maybe our customers might know something. Now, Shake to Undo is also getting a refresh, at least on the iPad, but I would assume it's coming to the iPhone in some new form as well, because Shaking to Undo is very rudimentary. It was a cool feature back in 2007 when the iPhone came out, but I don't know about you guys, I'm always a little embarrassed to just fling my iPhone around whenever I make a mistake in public. With iOS 13, there's gonna be a new gesture where you could swipe one direction, I think, on the keyboard with three fingers that will allow you to undo something uh, rather than you having to shake your iPad or iPhone. It's especially ridiculous on the iPad. I mean, you have a 12.9 inch device that you're just flailing around. It doesn't look nice. Following that, if you've had issues with hands-free Siri integration, you saying, hey, and then the trigger phrase to invoke Siri, uh, there's going to be better noise rejection and isolation in iOS 13, so hopefully it'll reject all those bad sounds that don't make you summon Siri, and it'll just understand your voice more clearly. In iOS 13, the accessibility menu is going to be much more prominent rather than it being hidden in side of settings, general, and then accessibility, it is going to be on the main page of settings now. And there's also, alongside that, going to be better integration with hearing aids with iOS 13 as well. Now jumping into apps, Apple is making so many changes across the board here. Again, so many changes that we've been asking for for years that are finally making the rounds to the iPhone and the iPad. First up, inside of health, there's gonna be a new daily page, a new hearing health page that'll hopefully like tell you if the sound around you is a little bit too loud. And then also new menstrual cycle tracking, which is something that I've always found weird that iOS didn't have great support for. It's a huge part of a lot of people's lives. So those features are all coming. Uh, and the hearing just sounds so interesting. Like, will your iPhone be able to say, hey bro, you're at a concert and it's way too loud. You're definitely damaging your ears. That could be incredible if you could get warned from a device that you're like permanently damaging your ears. Following that in reminders, there's gonna be four different colored sections. Uh, so reminiscent of what Andrew Vega and I came up with for a redesign reminders app about a year and a half ago instead of our iOS 12 concept, so it could look something like this. There's going to be tasks to be done today, all tasks, scheduled tasks, and then also a flagged tasks section. Anything but what we have now for the Reminders app is gonna be a gigantic upgrade. So I don't even care what it looks like. I don't even care if it looks anything like this. Just give me something other than the same iOS 7 Reminders app we've had since 2013. In the Books app, there are gonna be some big changes there, including reward tracking. Uh, maybe similar to how you can compete with friends on the Activity app. You may be able to compete with them now uh, through book reading, if that's your thing. In the Messages app, out of all the changes, I'm most excited for this. Just like you can set in uh, GroupMe or on like Facebook, you'll be able to set a screen name now, like a username for iMessage, and also a profile picture. So hopefully that'll make uh, get rid of the issue where all your contacts are gray with their two little like letter initials. I know I run into that all the time when I meet someone new. If they could just set a profile picture and then have that sync to my device, it would be just like Facebook or Twitter where you get to see everyone's profile pictures and they get to see yours. Next up in the Maps app will be easier to set frequent locations and also enter your home and work addresses. I always thought that was pretty easy, but if if it wasn't easy enough, it's gonna be better now. For anybody brave enough to use the stock mail app, there are going to be some big upgrades this year, some new category sorting that you'll be able to do into uh, different things like shopping or news. There's also going to be a way to mute specific threads. Simpler folder management is also said to be on the way. And if you wanna block specific contacts, uh, again, maybe that one person just doesn't get, you're not interested in a romantic relationship with them. Basically, if one of your contacts keeps spamming you, then you can block them now forever so you can never get contacted by them again. The last app that's gonna be seen an upgrade in iOS 13, again, some things may have not leaked completely, so other apps, uh, for example, camera, maybe get some upgrades there as well, we're just not entirely sure, but the Home app is going to be seeing better integration with security cameras, making previous recordings from security cameras uh, easier and more friendly because that is apparently not easy at all right now. Now, on top of all those other changes, Apple also has a lot more tricks up their sleeve when it comes to the iPad because the iPad is getting the biggest update iOS-wise it's ever seen without question it is going to be the most computer-like the iPad has ever been in its history. First up, there's going to be a brand new files app that makes actual file management more easy. A file management system is core to the experience on Mac, PC, Linux, you gotta have that. And the iPad just hasn't had that. So I've never been able to do serious video or photo work on the iPad. That's going to change this year. On top of that redesign home screen as well, there are going to be the ability to have tabs and apps and 
Also, this is crazy. I, I really can't believe we're actually going to be seeing this windowing on the iPad. You'll be able to detach specific panels inside of apps and drag them around just like this. The interface is going to be customizable to the point where, again, it's going to feel like an actual serious piece of computer. Like it's not going to be this little side tablet that Apple's been working on. This is going to be seriously good for once, at least according to these rumors. But you know, what if you wanna, I don't know, use a mouse with your iPad, like a physical mouse you would use on an iMac or a Windows desktop PC. You'll be able to do that as well with iOS 13, according to Federico Vitici, who got an insider email a while back saying that USB mouse support is coming in iOS 13 as an accessibility option, of course, Everybody that doesn't need accessibility options is gonna be turning that on on day one. But Apple is basically not going to be recommending that, but allowing you to finally use a mouse if you want to do so. So customization here, a really good thing. There's also gonna be new multitasking on the iPad. So rather than just sort of porting a version from the iPhone to the iPad, it is going to be all new. Again, as far as specific looks go, We'll have to wait until June 3rd. You'll be able to run the same app side by side in iOS 13, which again is something that you can always do on a Mac, but it, again, it's coming to the iPad after so many years. And to round things out, like one of the first features I talked about, that swipe keyboard that Android's had forever coming to the iPhone, this is also in testing a Safari download manager so that you could actually download things directly to your iPad uh, and see them just like you can in Safari when you click on the downloads button right here. It may not make the final version of iOS 13, but fingers crossed it comes at some point, whether it be in 13.0 beta one or later down the road in something like iOS 13.1, 0 0.2 or 0.3. Finally, you guys are probably wondering when exactly this is dropping on June 3rd and how you can get your hands on it. So I wanna cover that now. So iOS 13 is gonna be releasing at about 1 p.m. Pacific Standard, maybe a little bit before, maybe a little bit after that time on June 3rd because Apple's developer conference keynote is happening from 10 a.m. to noon. It usually drops within the next hour of the keynote uh, concluding. If you wanna get it immediately without waiting for third-party download links or doing it a bit sketchier where you're not paying for the developer profile, you can find those ways, but I would recommend being a developer. It's $99 a year. It's generally made for people who want to legit put apps that they've coded on the app store, but it also gives you day one, uh, second one access to all iOS betas for an entire year. Or free option that is totally legal straight through Apple is the public beta program. You won't be getting iOS 13 beta one the day it comes out, but in about a week or two after it comes out, they'll release that beta for public beta testers to hop on and test everything for free. So that's everything we know about iOS 13. Do you think this will revitalize the iPhone or the iPad. Do you think we'll even see some hardware with iOS 13 pre-installed on it at WWDC? I don't know the answers to those questions, but I do know this is the biggest update that iOS may ever see and definitely has ever seen. That's all for this video. Drop a like if you enjoyed it, hit subscribe for more, and I'll catch you guys with any more last minute iOS 13 rumors uh, and some good stuff coming in the next week. Peace.